Affinity Photo has several touch-up tools that seem kind of similar. So which one is best for the job? Today we'll look at all of them and see what the similarities and differences are. And yes, at least one of them you'll probably never need to use. So let's jump in. What's up guys, it's Trent, and today we're gonna to be talking about these tools over here, the clone brush tool, and also some of these other image repair tools, such as healing, patch, blemish, and in-painting. These tools are for touching up photos, and it can be a little confusing to know when to use which one. Now they all kind of work on the same principle, which is taking content from one part of your image and applying it somewhere else, either to fix a problem, remove an object, or copy an object to another location. So let's start with that last use case, which is copying an object from one area of your image to another. So I have this image here of some boats on nice blue water, and it is an image you can see here, it's not a pixel layer. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my clone brush tool, and watch what happens if I click on some open water here. We get hit with a couple messages. First, let's look at this bottom message. It's saying that it rasterized the layer for us. And this is because it's not actually possible to clone on an image layer. We need to clone our object onto a pixel layer. Now, as you may know, that's a destructive process if we're gonna rasterize our image layer. So let me undo this. And I'm back to an image here. Let me add a new layer, a pixel layer. So now what we can do is we can actually clone our object, the boat, onto the pixel layer and not destroy our original image. So let me click again, and we get that other error message, which is you must alt click to select a source before you're trying to clone. And what it's saying is that you're clicking the clone button and I don't know what you want to clone. So what I want to clone is this boat here. So let me hold alt and I'll click on the boat. And if I zoom in, well, you can kind of see there's a little bit of a crosshair there. Let me do it there so it's easier to see. Now you can see that there's this crosshair there. If I zoom out, now I can actually clone. So let me paint on my open water. And you notice again, nothing is happening. So this is like the third frustration you'll have when you use the clone tool. And the reason is you need to select this box up here that says current layer. You need to make sure it says current layer and below. Now when I actually go back and paint, you can see my boat is coming into existence here. So those are some of the tricky things to get started with the clone tool. I recommend using a pixel layer above your image. Make sure you select the source to current layer and below. And also you need to alt click the source of what you want to copy from. So let me just delete this and create a new fresh layer. Now we have a bunch of options up here for your clone brush and how it behaves. You can kind of experiment with them, but basically it's gonna be how transparent your copy is, the size of your brush, and things of that nature. If you click more here, you can actually customize your brush even more. And there's some dynamics here if you're using a stylus with a pressure curve. Now one of the more interesting settings is this aligned button here. And this is gonna determine what happens when you let go of the mouse and press down again. So perhaps the easiest way is to just show it. Let me unclick aligned. So I've alt clicked on my boat, so I'm gonna copy my boat. I'm pressing and holding my boat here to copy it. And now I'm gonna let up on my mouse and I'm going to copy again. And you can see every time I let up on my mouse, the cursor is resetting back to its starting point. You can see the cursor move as I paint because it's moving with respect to my mouse. And then when I let go, it resets. So I'll undo that. Now if I select a line, let me select my boat. I'll draw in my boat. And then when I'm done drawing in my boat, I'm letting up my mouse and I'm moving it over. And you can see my cursor is still moving. So I would be painting in this boat up here because th that cursor is near that boat. It kind of goes off the screen, of course. So in this example, that's not really what we want. Usually the best practice is to have unaligned, not checked, if you want to copy the same object to different places. And then we have our other options here where you can say, what is the rotation of the object? So I can paint my boat sideways. I can make it smaller or bigger. Now this isn't that useful for a boat, but if you're doing like flowers or something like that, or something organic, you know, like trees in the background, you want to vary the size, these settings could definitely be pretty useful. So I created a clone here with the clone brush and I labeled it clone brush. Now let's use the healing brush. Now note that on the healing brush, the options are pretty much very much the same. I can do the rotation, the scaling, all these other flow and hardness options, but I have the healing brush selected. So let's make sure we have our source selected and I'll do the healing brush over here. And you can see it's a little fuzzy until you let up on the mouse button. So I'll let go. And you can see it blends in a little bit better with the background when we do the healing brush. So in general, that's kind of one of the use cases of the healing brush is when you want it to blend in more with the surrounding area. And as the name implies, quite often the healing brush is used more for portraits of people where you want to kind of fix certain areas. 
So now let's look at the patch tool, and that's the one that looks like this square bandage. And the way this works is that you click and you drag around what you want the source of your image to be. So let's select the boat. Now, by default, actually nothing is happening because once again, I didn't select current layer and below. So this is something you'll have to always remember, and I forget it all the time. So make sure you select current layer and below with these tools. Now you can see what's happening now isn't what you expect. When I move my cursor, it's actually replacing what is in my selected area with what's under my cursor. So if I hover over the mountain, you can see the mountains going there. If I hover over the ocean, you see the ocean is going there. Now the cool thing is we can actually reverse this effect. So I'm gonna click selection is source. And now it's gonna do the opposite. So now it's gonna take what's in my selection and put it under my cursor. And this also does a pretty good job of blending into your background, depending on how the background matches with your source. And it's gonna be a little blurry until I click and commit it to that location. So let's put it here. And you do have the option of resizing it and rotating it, but I'll just leave it alone and I'll click again to finalize it. And there you go. So the patch tool blends more similarly to the healing brush, but it's a different method of selecting your source and your destination than that tool. It kind of gives you a little more flexibility in how you wanna draw around your shape. Okay, now let's look at removing objects. And in an image like this with a nice background that's really mostly uniform, some of these tools are just gonna be very similar to each other and it's not really gonna make much of a difference. Let's start with the clone tool. So I have the clone tool selected. And I'll create a new pixel layer. Let's say we wanna remove this little boat here. Well, I'll just alt click on some blue ocean and I can just click on my boat and basically it's gone. Let's try another method for this boat down here. Let's try the healing brush tool. So I'll alt click on some of this water here and let's paint it in, see what happens. And you can see it looks pretty good. So that works pretty well too. And let's go for this final boat over here. So the tool we looked at was the patch tool before. So let's do that. So I can select my boat. And in this case, I actually have to reverse it. So I don't want the selection to be the source. I want to go the other way, the original way. And I'll find something that kind of matches. I'll double click. And there you go, it's essentially fixed. So I delete that layer. Let me show you two other tools. So let's look at the inpainting brush tool first. And this will be a simple example, but we'll do a more complicated example next. So I'll create a new pixel layer. And once again, I remembered this time, be sure to select current layer and below. And what the inpainting tool does is it allows me to select an area. And if I unclick, it automatically fills it in. And what it does is when you select an area, it takes the part just outside the bounds of your area and it tries to fill in the area you selected in a smart way with that texture and pattern. And another tool is the blemish removal tool. Now this actually requires, as far as I know, you actually have to work on a rasterized layer. So let me copy my layer here and I'll rasterize it. And I'll do the blemish removal tool here. It's a little tricky to see what it does, but basically you're just kind of swapping out the area under your brush with area near it. So if I click and drag, you can see I, I'm literally just sliding things out of the way. So this boat up here, I can click and drag and it just moves. I can even do this bigger boat. Now, as the name implies, it is used probably more for skin textures and things like that. And as you saw, it requires us to rasterize a layer. So I'm not quite sure if the blemish tool is something that still needs to be used these days. Probably in painting and the healing tool are enough. So the example we looked at here was kind of simple. Let's look at something more complicated and let's dive a little bit deeper into the in painting tool. So here we have a more complicated example. We have this beach scene with some boats and a horizon and a guy. And let's say I want to remove this guy from the image. I'm sure he's nice, but let's say I just want to have a nature scene with some horizon and sand. What I'll do is I have my pixel layer selected here and I have my in painting tool and I'll make sure I have current layer and below selected as always and I'll click and drag over the guy. I'll be sure to get all this area here. And now you'll really see the magic of the inpainting tool. So when I let go of the brush, it thinks for a bit. And you can see it removed him pretty much perfectly. There are some imperfections here, but we'll get to those in a bit. Now let me delete that for a second. Another option you can do is you can select your subject with the selection tool. And you can also do edit in paint. And this method can be a little more flexible because it allows you to build a selection more. However, as far as I can tell, you need to do it destructively on the layer itself. So I'll do edit in paint and you can see it removes him. But if I do it on another pixel layer, it doesn't do anything. So I believe this only works on the current layer, but it's an option that maybe is good enough for you. So let me go back to my original method of just painting him out. Now let me show you something that might go wrong is if you don't fully select your subject here, like I actually missed some of his coat. So let's see what happens. I'll let go. 
and you can see sometimes you get these artifacts. That's just because I didn't fully select my subject. So let me undo it. But let me just do that the correct way now and I'll just get it back to what we want it to be. So as you can see, we have kind of this problem with the horizon here. There's that kind of jagged effect with the water. And this is actually a good use of the patch tool. So I'm gonna create a new layer and I'll call this our patch tool layer. And let's select the patch tool here. And what I can do is I can zoom in and I can select this area that I wanna replace with something. Now I have a really nice area to copy it from on the left, so I'll let go. And what I can do is I can move my cursor over here. And let's see if I can find a place and get it nice and lined up. So like right there, I'll click, let go. You can see it almost perfectly fixed it. You can really barely even see the difference now. I can still see a little bit of a jump. It's noticeable to me, it's a little annoying. Let's see if we can get the inpainting brush tool to fix it up. I think it's looking pretty solid there. So let's see before and after. So this is before, after, before, after. And we also have this area down here with the cement. So let's see what it looked like originally. So that was your original one and that's it now. Let's see if the patch tool helps us there. And I think the patch tool worked really well there. So now something we can do is look for repetitions, which we kind of want to get rid of. We don't want the same pattern or shape to appear in multiple places. For example, I can see this and this are the same. I can see this and where is it? This over here are the same. So let's just use some more in painting and let's just get rid of some of those effects. I'll just kind of randomly click some things. I can see this is duplicated. Anything else? I think we mostly got it. So this is our original image and we can see the changes we made with the in painting and patch tools. It's pretty amazing we're able to do that. And I think this is a pretty good result. Now what happens if you want to clone something across images? Well, Affinity Photo allows you to do that. So for example, I have this image here of some cats on a farm. And let's say I have this other image of a cat and I want to clone this cat into this other image. How could we do that? Well, the way we can do that is with sources. And first what we need to do is enable the sources. So we go to window sources and you see this option here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my cat image here and we want this to be our source. Now the way you do that is you click this button here that says add global source. And if I click it, nothing actually happens at first. Now I believe that's because we have it as an image and it needs to be a raster layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this part and then I'll just make a version that's rasterized. I'll call it raster. And now with that selected, I'll click add source. And you can see this cat photo is one of our sources. Now, if I go back to this other image, you can see the cat photo is still there. And what this means is if I select my clone brush tool, remember before we had all these options, current layer and below and all that kind of stuff. Now we can select global. And what I can do now is I can double click on my photo of the cat. And if I alt click somewhere, that's going to be the new target. So I clicked on his back there. Let me just do that again. I'll click on the face here. So watch where the cursor goes. Alt click. Now you can see the cursor's on the face. If I go to the paw, alt click. Now it's on the paw. So let's just go back to the middle of the cat. So I'll alt click here. And remember this is all with the clone brush selected. And I can start painting in my cat. Now I'll undo that. This would be a good example of a case where we want to reduce the size of our image. So I'll scale it down a little bit. Let me move the sources out of the way. Let's say I want this cat to be in the back. So we have our cat there. And there's a couple ways I could fix it to make it look better. I could go and I could actually add a mask to it. So if your background's really different and not reading correctly, you could actually do some masking. So I'll do that. So that's with the mask effect. So I did some touch-ups there. I just gave him a gradient map. I did a little bit of a color burn on him to make him darker. So this is before, after, before, after. So that kind of shows you how you can bring things from one image into another. And what I just showed you, I used the clone tool, but it also works with the healing brush as well. Now these tools are also really great for cleaning up old photos and art. Here I have a John Singer Sargent one, I believe. And you can see there's scratches and dust on it, but using our tools, we can actually really quickly make improvements to this. So I'll create a new layer. And I think the in-painting tool is usually a good place to start. So I'll select that current layer and below. Get a little scratch there. We can remove something under the eye. It's really just about identifying parts that need to be fixed and clicking on them. 
Got a lot of areas in here, all these cracks. Now this part of the image here seems like an actual scratch or something like that. So let's see how this works. We could use the healing brush tool. Let's alt sample around here. See how it works. It is getting a little blurred. So before, after. I'm gonna use a clone brush tool here because I think that was getting a little blurred on the edge. And let's heal that edge that's kind of sharp. So before, after, before, after. A lot of times you just have like these little dots and things that need to be fixed, these little scratches. Something like this looks like a scratch, so let's see if get rid of it. This looks like a scratch also. Bunch of scratching up here. Lots of stuff going on here. You don't want to overdo it, but you know, when you see damage, you do want to fix it. Can't tell if this is a scratch or not. I guess it is. So here we have kind of a rough example of a cleanup. So say before, after, before, after. So these are quite powerful tools for repairing photos and old paintings. So which of these touch up tools do you find yourself using the most? Are you still confused by some of them? If so, leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.